On behalf of the players, we simply say thank you. Thank you for the privilege of competing before you here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the XFL. Hello and welcome to Camel Clutch Cinemite Super Bowl Weekend. And this is the podcast that talks about movies that involve wrestling or have wrestlers in them. I'm Guy Hutchinson. And I'm Craig Cohen. On this episode, we are talking about the 2005 version of The Longest Yard. Which has football (laughs) in it. Yes. Makes total sense. Conveniently enough. The Super Bowl is this weekend. It is the Baltimore Ravens against the San Francisco 49ers, which is like a tag team match between Bill Goldberg and Steve Austin versus the great Kali and Kevin Nash. Yes, I was going to say Kali and Adam Sandler, but uh, Nash works. Those are the four wrestlers that we will see in this movie today. You've never seen this. No, but I've never even seen the original one with Burt Reynolds from, I guess, the early 70s. Right. And Bird is in this. Yes. Now, here's my thing on this. I have seen this, but I don't remember anything that happens in it other than Adam Sandler gets arrested for drunk driving early in the film. And if that doesn't happen, then I don't remember any of it. I think I saw this when I had a fever one day. I think I had a fever. I was in bed, and I think this was on cable, probably 2006, you know, right mm-hmm. after it first got to basic cable. And I don't remember much at all about The Longest Yard. Okay, so this is going to be good then, and this is new for both of us. Uh, let's, let's break down when it came out. May 27, 2005, made what sounds like a lot of money, $158 million. Uh, foreign total was $32 million, which says this didn't translate as well to the overseas market, which pulled in a total of $190 million worldwide, which is a big number. Yeah. Uh, we've seen bigger, and... I don't know how this would uh, would rank. Do you know how this ranks among films of its type? Yes, in terms of comedy remakes, it is number one. Wow, until the Home Alone remake comes yeah. out. In terms of sports movies that are related to football, right. it's number three, which is pretty impressive considering there's a lot of football movies out there. You've got... Um, the Good North, Iron Gang with yeah, The Rock. Rock. North Dallas 40 yeah. with uh, Nick Nolte. Sure. Um... Semi tough with Burt Reynolds. Exactly. So I'm trying to think what would be number one and two. What are football movies that made more than this? Uh, maybe Friday Night Lights may have pulled in a ton mm-hmm. of money. Maybe uh, what was that Oliver Stone one? Um, oh, any Pacino, given Sunday. Any given that, Sunday. That, that might that might have done it. Yeah. So so this is uh, this is big on that. And for for what other category? In sports comedy, it is number two. Okay. Which is, that's Sounds pretty good. impressive, too, because there's a lot of sports comedies out there. Sure. You know, maybe maybe number one's Blades of Glory. I wouldn't even know. Yeah. I mean, because $158 million, that's a pretty big box office for a sports comedy. I guess so. I don't see a, I don't see a lot of sports comedies coming out. I remember a number of years ago, Kingpin came out, and somebody was like, "This is the biggest bowling movie ever made." And I was like, "I don't know of any others." You know, so I don't know. Maybe there's you know maybe that means something. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, this was directed and written by Peter Siegel or Seagal. Do you, I, do you have I, any idea? I call him Siegel. All right. Uh, and what did he do? Uh, he's done a lot of comedy. He's first movie was 1994's Naked Gun 33 and a Third. I like that. The Final Insult. I like that one. They they uh, they never got to do a fourth one, which Leslie Nielsen said would have been called Beating a Dead Horse. Although I don't know what the number sequence, because 33 and a Third yeah. w- refers to records, yes. which a lot of people, I think even then, yeah, that was an outdated yeah. term. But they had done two and a half mm-hmm. was, the, was the sequel, and then they, they went 33 and a Third. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like that one. That's that's uh, that's a pretty funny movie. That's the one Anna Cole Smith is and, all over and that. Weird Al too, right? Well, Weird Al's in all of them, okay. but yeah, that the, one they've got the awards, awards yeah. ceremony. Yeah, and Weird Al. Yeah, Weird Al is in all three Naked Gun movies. In the first one, there's the scene where he's getting off the plane and he goes up to the microphones oh. and they're like, "They're not <laughs> here for you." Weird Al was on the plane. Now, in the second one, he's very hard to spot because he's dressed up like as a as a as a bad guy. 
and he says he's got like a, he's like, he says one line. He's like, you know, you come any closer and we'll shoot, you know, or something. Mm-hmm. He's in one scene and he's not playing Weird Al, but in this one he returns as Weird Al. But he does appear in all three films of the Naked Gun trilogy. So, so that's a good uh, movie for this to be associated with. What else? Uh, another movie that's held in kind of a hard, high regard in terms of comedies. Tommy Boy with okay. Chris Farley and yeah. Um, yeah, David, but, Spade. David Spade. That was uh, that was very funny. They did two movies, that and Black Sheep, and this is the funnier one, Tommy Boy. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, My Fellow American. Okay, I remember My Fellow Americans. This is, it's two uh, ex-presidents that have to go on a mission to absolve their name. It's uh, Walter Matthau uh, yes. and Jack Lemmon, and they've got to go on a mission because the vice president, which I believe is Dan Aykroyd, is framing them for some kind of a crime. Okay. Yeah, when I saw the title, it didn't ring a bell, but I remember that. You know, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, it's been a while since I saw it. I think Dan Aykroyd is not guilty, but he's, he's bringing the hammer down on these two, and it's the current vice president that's guilty. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a funny little comedy. Anytime you get Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon together, I'm I'm pleased, and I believe I believe they are both in that. I'm try, I'm, I'm I'm racking my brain to think if if it's possible that it's just Jack Lemmon and and someone else in the Walter Matthau role. But I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Fun movie though. Yeah, I'm sure the movie in your head is probably <laughs> better than and that is no slight on the movie, but. You've probably created a better movie in your head just now. I have uh, I have strong memories of this, but I can't remember if Walter Matthau's in it. Because I can't picture Walter Matthau ever being elected president. That's where I'm having trouble with this. I remember that the one ticket was Kramer and Haney, mm-hmm. and I only thought that was interesting because you had Kramer on Seinfeld and Mr. Haney yeah. on Petticoat Junction. Mm-hmm. So that stuck in my head, but I have no I have no concept of who would have ever voted for Walter Matthau. So it, there's a good chance it's Jack Lemmon and someone else. Yeah. But, I mean, I think if this country can elect Richard Nixon, they can elect <laughs> Rolf, Walter Yeah, Walter, Walter Matthau. Matthau, you know, would do a good Nixon, yeah. too. All right, yeah. all right, I, I'm fine with that. So that's who directed it, that's who wrote it, but there's another guy that got credit for writing this as well, right? Yeah, Sheldon Turner, who's actually got a pretty interesting career. He's a producer as well. He um, wrote this movie, The Longest Yard. He's also uh, was the writer for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, which was the last Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre before the new Texas okay. Chainsaw Massacre. He wrote uh, Up in the Air with George Clooney and X-Men First Class. Oh, okay. Now, you know, I noticed something. Well, first of all, X-Men First Class does not have uh, the wrestler playing Sabretooth, does it? No, they replaced it with Lee Schreiber. Okay, so <laughs> we, we're not going to talk about that. But I do want to say, I'm looking at the filmographer filmography of the, uh, the director, and I notice here... Anger Management, 2003. Yep. 51st Dates, 2004. Longest Yard, 2005. He was in an Adam Sandler rut. It was a trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we're going to do, because this is Super Bowl weekend, what we're going to do is we're going to start this movie. I have vague recollections of it. You have no memory of it. So this is the pre-show. Then we're going to see you after the first quarter. Then we'll see you at halftime. Then we'll see you after the third quarter. And if you see where I'm going with this, we're going to see you in the end zone after the final quarter of this Super Bowl of movies, The Longest Yard. And at the end of the first quarter, the score is 7-3. to three. Craig, go on, how about that action so far? Uh, it's pretty fast and furious. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's... James Garner. James Garner was the other president. I knew they wouldn't elect Walter Matthau. It was James Garner and Jack Lemmon. That, I can see that. That makes oh. sense. Let's Woo. green light it. Oh. So uh, it looks like now we're going to officially get into some spoiler territory for this movie. That's right. That's right. So we are we we've now seen the first approximately twenty five minutes of this film, and what do you feel? Have you seen this movie before? <laughs> well, you know it's, it's funny. The opening scene has uh, an uncredited Courtney Cox at a, a big posh Hollywood party. It seems, mm-hmm. and from almost the mid- opening shot, I said, "I've seen this." Right, <laughs> and then within thirty seconds, I realized that I had probably seen the opening scene maybe on TV and then flipped away. Okay. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, it felt like I had seen the movie, but then 
I have vague memories of this. As it's been playing out, I'm, I'm going, yeah, I remember that. Oh, I remember Austin's crazy mustache. Well, let's get right into it. So it starts off, they're having this party scene, and he's in the room. Adam Sandler's in the room, uh, in his bedroom by himself. He's not coming down to his girlfriend's party, and he's, uh, she's like, you're going to have to buy your own bananas. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it was funny because she wanted him to put on, like, a Popeye uniform. Yeah. Where it wasn't a costume party. No, but I think she, I think he's her doll. Yeah. You know what I mean? She seemed like she wore the pants in the relationship. Yeah. He was a drunk, and, it, you know, she was like, nobody cares about your football anymore. Yeah. Come on down and dance for my party. But, you know, it was funny. If they didn't show Adam Sandler with uh, a six-pack of beer by his side, you'd just think he was being Adam Sandler. Right. Because there was nothing in the performance that... That it's yelled that, out know, at me. He's drunk. It was, no. He's doing the Adam Sandler boy. You know, it's like there's nothing. Like, I don't want to go downstairs. I'm going to stay right here in bed. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so he gets. He's like, I'm going to steal your car. He puts her. He locks her in the closet. Yeah, but it, in all fairness, the closet was probably the size of my bedroom. <laughs> this is a very good fact. This closet was definitely the size of a nice apartment. Um, so yeah. So this closet, she gets locked in it. Um, she can't get out. He takes her Bentley, I think yes. he says, and he goes on a chase through, you know, downtown, whatever town we're in. Did mm -hmm. you catch what, what city we're in? I didn't notice. No, neither did I. I assumed it was California. Out, out yeah, yeah, I, I mean, thought it was L.A. or something, mm -hmm. but I, I have no idea. It definitely doesn't look like a prison in L.A. as far as I would imagine, but, but who knows. So there's this chase, uh, you know, down these highway ro roads. First thing we get is the cops pull him over, and he's like, you can hold my beer. And the one cop's all into the fact that he pulled over Adam Sandler. The other cop is like, you know, hey, he made fun of my ears, and, yeah. you know, we ought to lock him up. You know, I, I, he's like, I hate to lock you up, but we're going to have to lock you up. And so Sandler gives him his beer and <laughs> crashes into his car. Somehow his car is still going. Yes. And then there's just a, a beautiful wreck. A a uh, it reminded me very much of like Cannonball Run or yeah. you know one of those types it, of crash. Hal Needham type it, of crash. And it turned into a, a, a demolition derby. And one thing I liked about this sequence is during the chase, it's getting news coverage as most high speed chases get on the news channels. Yes. And they basically told us everything we needed to know about Adam Sandler's character yes. in that news report, which they, I think was a really good way of delivering the information to us. Right. He's a criminal because he, he shaved points on a, uh, on a on football games. Yes. And he's the only person to ever do that, which I, I assume mm -hmm. that's true, and that was pretty interesting. And he, uh, he, he's on probation. In the, For racketeering charges, yes. Five years. And the, uh, the, the lady, the newscaster, says... Well, clearly, this <laughs> will affect his probation, and yeah. which seemed a little seemed a little biased for a news lady. But I guess she was an exposition lady at this point. Yeah. She had a lot of exposition to get out. She was like, James Cromwell won't be here for a while. For him to give out more exposition, I got to get some out. Then they 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 started off what looked like it was going to be fast. What was it Fast and Furious? Yeah, with the bus. So Adam Sandler's getting transported. Or was that Fast Five? Fast Five. Fast Five. Be, yeah. Or either one, right? Fast it was the and end Furious. Of Fast and Furious right. or Fast Five. Yeah. It's a it's, choose your pick your poison. At this point, you pointed out a wrestling cameo, and I got super <laughs> excited. There was a, a guard behind Adam Sandler who, the first time you see him, he's got a Bob Holly smile. Yeah, he looked a lot yeah. like him. He had a hat pulled down, and he had a build that could be a Bob Holly build. And I was like, oh, my God, Bob Holly's in this. Oh, my God, I can't wait. Uh, but no, no, it was not to be. It was just a guy who, unfortunately, yeah. looks like Bob yeah. Holly. That's not a look I'd want. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but that was interesting. Interesting. Uh, we see we see uh, him get to the the, the uh, police station. The cops are mean. The guards yeah. are mean. They're roughing him up. We we already know who the bad guys are in this. We're supposed to love Adam Sandler, which despite. I don't see yet. <laughs> I mean, he's he's been reckless. He he was mean to his girlfriend. Right. Um, he's a loathsome person so far, but we're supposed to love him. But about ten minutes in, we get stone cold with this mustache, which doesn't look that bad no, on him. He pulled and it off. It's, I think it's because we're used to the goatee, so mm -hmm. it's just we're just losing, mm -hmm. you know, from the from the uh, lower lip down of his of his facial hair. But we see him. Uh, we see James Cromwell. <laughs> yes, which I was instantly conflicted because normally when James Cromwell shows up in a movie, I'm waiting for him to have his heel turn. Yeah, and here out of the gate, he's the prison warden. 
but he's already established as our heel, so there's right. no moment where he can turn bad on us. No, you got, you got a very good point there. Yes, um, I love James Cromwell. Uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big fan uh, all the way back from when he was on All in the Family when I was a kid. Okay, yeah, and yeah. Stretch, I thought he was so funny. And then when he had his big comeback with the Babe movie, I said, wow, this, you know, that's, that's Stretch, you know, Stretch Cunningham, I think was his name. He was Archie's friend. He would tell funny jokes and he'd talk like this. And so I love him in this so far. He, he's well cast. I mean, this yeah. is, he always plays authoritative, you know, angry kind of yeah. guys. And he's the, like the warden of the prison here. Absolutely yeah. perfect. We get Colonel Sanders, mm -hmm. which I assume this is a different Colonel Sanders from the Water Boy, which had a Colonel Sanders character, okay. so that Adam Sandler could be like, "What are you doing, Colonel Sanders? Could you dress like Colonel Sanders?" And apparently, eat your chicken too. <laughs> uh, so the the James Cromwell Cromwell character is the warden, and he I guess he's mad that his 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 football team right. hasn't won a championship in five years. So he actually pulled some strings to get Adam Sandler to his prison facility down in Texas. Which would make a lot of sense that this could be L.A. and then he gets sent to Texas. I don't know how that would ever really work, but heck, I haven't been to prison, so I don't know. But James Cromwell then lays out all this exposition. We learn everything. You know, we learn uh, now that he hit one of the guards, you know, uh, uh, he, he really, the guard had it coming, but because of that, you know, he could stay there longer, so he's, he's, got, he's yeah. got his thumb on him. Adam Sandler instantly doesn't want to play for his team. Adam Sandler says, I want to do my three years and be gone. Right. And it seemed like, again, we were supposed to be on Adam Sandler's side. But again, I'm like, hey, you know what? You're going to be in jail for three years. It would probably pass the time quicker if you just suit up, play ball, have yeah. some fun. But it, so, again, it was just, you know, we're supposed to feel like, you know, bad for Adam Sandler's character. And he, he really had no reason to not want to play ball, yeah. aside from the fact that he didn't like James Cromwell. Yeah. Now, we get two uh, cameos at this point. We get Cloris Leachman. I don't know how much she'll be in the movie from this point on, but God, I yeah. hope she's in every scene. Cloris Leachman, absolutely hysterical, is like the secretary character, yeah. saying, I liked your underwear, <laughs> and they were really fantastic. And then there's this scene where they go to the lunchroom, and he, he, Adam Sandler picks a fight with a guy, hits him in the back of the head with a lunch tray and then then stone cold drops a, a grenade <laughs> that yeah like shoots bb's or something yeah, yeah everybody knows to get out of the way yeah. what did chris rock call it a hornet's nest yeah, yeah i think that's what he said and and i love the look on austin's face when he does yeah. it austin just with a big smile yeah. on his face drops this grenade down and then we get the other cameo Kevin Nash, yes. I didn't recognize him. You pointed him out. He's in the back, but he's gigantic. Yeah. And he's surrounded by big yeah. guys, and he's gigantic. Yeah. He doesn't have any facial hair. He's got all the gray in there, yeah. and he had a hat on. But it was clearly Kevin Nash. We got to see him. Uh, then they throw Sandler in the hot box for starting this riot. For a week. Yeah, <laughs> which I would think would kill you. Yeah, he, see, he looks like he hasn't lost any weight after no, that two weeks. That's true. He hasn't also grown the crazy long yes. beard either. Usually in movies, especially comedies, they go with the Daniel Bryan beard after a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. But he, uh, we get Stone Cold here delivering some pretty funny lines. Yeah. You know, I, I like his delivery. I even like his <laughs> laugh, you know. I, and so then they go to the football field, and we see the, the prison football team. Mm -hmm. This was filmed at the Allenville Penitentiary in Texas. But it wasn't the Allenville Penitentiary in Texas. Okay. It was the New Mexico State Penitentiary on Route 14 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay. So that's what was standing in for, for the Texas location. Mm -hmm. Makes no difference yeah. to me, yeah. but someone in New Mexico <laughs> got the dollars, <laughs> yes. and then Texas got the bad rap for having the big prison <laughs> with the corrupt, uh, with the corrupt leader. Um, so let's talk about the two wrestlers we've mm -hmm. seen so far. We've seen Stone Cold Steve Austin, born 1964. He's been described by Vince McMahon, and I think this is a very fair assessment, as the most profitable wrestler in the history of the WWE. Inducted into the Hall of Fame by Vince, which is amazing. Vince yeah. has never done that. And to my knowledge, Vince has never attended a Hall of Fame other than to induct Austin. He didn't induct, you know... Um, uh, Hulk Hogan, when he went yeah. in, he didn't induct anyone else. Yeah. This is the one guy he went in there for. Um, Austin held tw 
he held 25 championships in his career. WWF champion six times, uh, winner of the King of the Ring 1996, which had the very famous Austin 316 <laughs> says Austin's going to kick your ass yeah. or whatever. Uh, 1997, 1998, 2001, he won the Royal Rumble. And in 2003 and 2004, after he retired, he was the co-general manager and the sheriff of Raw. Uh, 2011, he returned to host Tough Enough, and we've seen him on Expendables here on Camel Clutch Cinema. And also, we've talked about him in Recoil when we talked to Johnny Sullivan, the screenwriter of that film. Do you have any Stone Cold Steve Austin memories? Anything you can think of about Stone Cold? I gotta say, one of the biggest visual images I have of him, and I think they used this at the beginning of Raw for years, uh, was Stone Cold being taken away in handcuffs by the police and mm-hmm. sort of laughing at Vince or mocking him as he was being pulled away. And that's such an iconic image for me when yeah. I think of Stone Cold. And there was a, if you think about it, I can completely understand him being the most profitable superstar of all time because there was a point in the late 90s where anywhere you went, you saw somebody wearing an Austin 316 shirt. You really did. Yes. And there were even like parody shirts you would see. People would, you know, make a shirt, you know, like with, uh, you know, Joe's Crab Shack that would say Crabs 316. I mean, that was, you know, so iconic, that black and white shirt. Um, yeah, yeah, that is that is really cool. There's a lot of in-ring moments I remember. There's him playing the guitar, playing Kumbaya. Uh, there were, he, I mean, he was involved in so many funny angles and then so many great matches. Mm-hmm. And for a guy that really didn't have that big of a move set, I mean, yeah. this is he, his move set isn't any you know grander than John Cena's, mm-hmm. but he did it all very well. And if you go back to when he was stunning Steve, he was a much yeah. more you know a much better wrestler. Uh, but it's always fun to watch. I remember one time watching him, and this was so great. I used to go to the to the live shows, and then afterwards, me and my, a couple of my friends, whoever I went with, mm-hmm. and I know you and I did mm-hmm. this one time, at least, we would go to the ramp where they drive out. Yes. And we saw Stone Cold Steve Austin driving, Vince McMahon in the passenger seat, and Jr. in the back seat. <laughs> And I, at the time, they were feuding with each other. Yeah. JR was, you know, commentating, and we know he was best friends with Austin. But I remember as soon as it happened, I got a huge laugh because I said, Who wants to see me drive Vince <laughs> McMahon to the airport? Give me a hell yeah. And everybody that was standing there laughed hysterically. So I, I was very proud of that moment. So that sticks in my head. And it was really cool to see him up that close, you know, yeah. at that time when he was, you know, a mega, mega superstar. So he's great in this. Uh, the other guy we see, we barely have much to, to go on with Kevin Nash. You pointed out it may have been him on the field when they were showing the prison guards training. There's one guy that, that's like, where's the Gatorade? And he turns it over. And he was on so quick that, you know, we didn't back it up to check. Yeah. But I think, you're, I think you might be right. It was a huge giant, and the voice did sound like Nash. And I think he had the tattoo mm-hmm. on his shoulder. But tell me a little bit about Kevin Nash. All right, Kevin Nash, born July 9th, 1959. And he wrestled under several ring names. Names. Oh my God! Oz. <laughs> but he's yeah, he's most notably known by his real name in World yeah. Championship Wrestling, which he needed to do when he left he WWF be because he couldn't be Diesel. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he he's been a champ in in every. I think he's probably the only guy to, or one of the only guys to be a champ in TNA, WCW, a, yeah. and WWE. Never got the ECW though. No. Between those three federations, WWE, WCW, and TNA, he's held a total of 21 championships, and he's a six-time world champion and a five-time, five-time, (laughs) five-time WCW world heavyweight champion. So that's the other one is a WWF champion. Yes, one-time WWF champion. And he's recognized by WWE as the longest reigning WWF champion of the 90s, and the tenth longest reigning of all time, having held the title for 358 days, just passed recently. Yeah, which is actually pretty amazing, considering uh, that you know in punks, that era. Yeah, yeah. Punk's coming up on 470 yeah. some odd days, so I mean, he held it for almost a year. Which oh, it is, was a very impressive number. And what also was interesting about that was. When he won the title, he won the title from uh, uh, Bob Backlund, and Bob Backlund had had it for such a short time. I think he he had won it two or three days before. Yeah. It was like at a pay per view, and this was a house show. Yeah, he wanted a house show. Yeah, yeah. So he and he won it in I don't know thirty seconds from Bob Backlund. Yeah, he was also uh, had a lot of success in the tag team division. 
He was a nine-time WCW World Tag Team Champion, two-time WWF World Team Tag Team Champion, and a one-time TNA World Tag Team Champion. And he was also a one-time WWF Intercontinental Champion, and he was also a TNA Legends Champion, which is a title I don't even <laughs> know about. And he was also no- notoriously a member of the Click, a group which included Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Scott Hall, and Sean Waltman. Right. And he's one of the three founding members of the of New World Order, yeah. along with Hulk Hogan and Scott Hall. Well, I hope we see him some more. Let's get back to the action here on Camel Clip Cinema with The Longest Yard. And that buzzer means that it's halftime, and it is 14-9 to 9 here at the big game. Craig Cohen, what do you think is going on so far? It's pretty exciting, I'll tell you. It's, it's, it's shaping up to be a really, really solid game. Nash just tore his quad, and the great colleague can't walk. Goldberg accidentally injured Stone Cold, and then he walked out and said he won't play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this movie is picking up steam. We've seen Terry Crews from The Expendables, mm-hmm. and what we've seen for the for the past quarter is we've seen the team that Adam Sandler is putting together to play against the guards. And basically, the way he's pitching it to everybody is, "Hey, you'll get to hit the guards." Yeah, and we're at a point where the team is starting to look pretty formidable. Yes, so let's, let's talk about who we've seen, though. Mm-hmm. We've seen this guy who reminded us of Mark Michael Clark Duncan, who was <laughs> yes. bench-pressing an entire stand full of people. Yes. He was, he was an interesting choice. I don't really like him so far. Yeah, they're making him extremely, extremely dumb, almost to the point where you don't believe it. Right, he, yeah. His nose gets broken. He says, you broke it in my nose. Right. Just real hokey... <laughs> Dare I say stereotypical? Yeah. Now we see Burt Reynolds, and I don't know if Burt's playing the same character, but he's saying, you know, I used to be a, a you know a player at, at some school, Oklahoma Boomer Sooner, and and now you know I'm I'm here and I want to be a coach. So yes. we get Burt Reynolds, and we're getting a lot of Burt Reynolds. Yeah. You know? And I got to tell you, Burt Reynolds in this movie, he's got that Burt Reynolds look that he's had pretty much since Boogie Nights. Mm-hmm. And looking at Burt Reynolds here, I got to say, you know, I don't know what prison's like, but he's able to maintain a pretty good look in prison. He's got the very, very well groomed facial hair. You know, his eyebrows are impeccable. That's and, uh, right. Just saying. Um, we learn about the star rating that they have for <laughs> inmates. That the the more violent you are, the more stars you get. Chris Rock has only half yeah, a star. star. Yes, and the, the it maxes out at five stars. So you're the baddest of the bad. Your great colleagues would be a five. Yeah, we start seeing these guys that have five stars. One guy I want to mention that I just really like the performance of Lobo Sebastian as Torres. Okay, I really liked him. He's sitting there watching Joy Behar. Yes, on the View, and he's really into Joy Behar. And I, I enjoyed him. He was a guy that you know stood out to me. The other guys that stand out, obviously the wrestlers. We see great Kali at this point. He's in a cell. What he's doing? Push ups. He's bleeding. He's, he's banging his head against the wall. And he's in one of those like Hannibal he- Lecter cells. Yes. It's one of those like plexiglass with the holes in it. It immediately made me think of Silence of the Lambs. So mm-hmm. he is far, far, far away from general population. I got to say, every moment that they built up to somebody where they're like oh we're going to see somebody and you saw like a big shadow every time you and I both went oh it's Kali that's got to be Kali so finally when we got Kali we're like ah finally because the payoff to you know we're going to go see a giant Kali is a great giant and boy does he look the part in this boy I mean he's intimidating looking yeah he got quite a build up it was almost like a build up where when they bring a wrestler in where you get the the promo (laughs) six weeks out this movie promo Kali yeah it really did. Tell us about the great Kali. Sure, the great Kali, born Dalip Singh Rana in August of 1972. Yeah, young guy. Yeah, comparatively to the other guys we've seen in this movie. Yeah, the, yeah. the other wrestlers. He's an Indian American professional wrestler, actor, and he's also a power lifter. Yeah, well, I can imagine. I mean, he's gigantic. Yeah. In 2007, he became the world heavyweight champion. Yeah, I don't know how that. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. 
Yeah. And be- the, I mean, they pushed him to the moon for a while, though. There was the Punjabi prison <laughs> match, which made very little sense. I mean, this, the, you know, Vince looked at this guy and was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, we'll just climb on his back and ride him to the finish line. You know? Which I'm not even sure Kali wanted. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, before he became a pres- professional rec- wrestler, actor, or powerlifter, he was a police o- officer in the Punjabi State Police. Right, which is why <laughs> they created the Punjabi prison match, because we're to believe that in Punjabi, all they have, or in Punjab, yeah. they just have a bunch of sticks in the ground, <laughs> and if you can get through both of those, you're free. Yeah. That's the rule. And there's a referee to count to make sure you get out. Yeah, he's, a port- he's appeared in uh, two Bollywood films, yeah. and four Hollywood films. I, can you name all four? I think I can. For First, I know he's in Get Smart. He has a, a nice role in Get Smart. He's in MacGruber with all the other, you know, wrestlers. There's a ton of wrestlers in that. We've talked about it before. One day we'll have to watch it. Um, and when I say have to, I mean have to, because mm-hmm. sadly the only the only the first ten minutes are are enjoyable. But uh, he's also in uh, the A Team. The, the remake of the A-Team, and I didn't notice him in okay. that, but I've read that he's in that. And I've yes. seen that movie like yeah. three times, but apparently in the chop shop, he's one of the workers, and he's hard to miss. So yeah. I assume it's just that your attention is never focused on the giant in the background. Now, Bollywood films, he's done quite a lot. I don't. I think he's done more than they're saying. Yeah. I think th- this is this information is from Wikipedia, but I think this is out of date. I may be wrong, but I I, I know he did a movie called Kushti, which is uh, it's just it's like a type of wrestling there it looked a little bit more like sumo mm-hmm. and he's in that and that i watched and and it looked really good he's in another one where he's in like the jungle yeah. um and then i think i saw at least one more that he's in so i i don't know that it may be yeah. two but i feel like he's done he's done at least three now but, you know what i love about bollywood films and not to get on a whole bollywood discussion here but i think if we have people listening that haven't seen a bollywood film <laughs> you got to sit down and watch one, and you can almost pick any Bollywood film, and you're gonna right. get you're gonna get a little bit of everything. There's gonna be a dance number. There's gonna be songs. There's gonna be comedy. There's gonna be some kind of action. It's amazing that in Bollywood they make movies and they say we got to hit every yeah. single. Yeah, it's really true. It's like if you watch a movie in this country, it's a drama, it's a yeah. comedy. Sometimes, like Back to the Future, you'll be like, oh, it's a comedy, yeah. it's science fiction, it's a fantasy, and it's got romance in it. But th- but when they go out there, they're like, everything is a musical, <laughs> everything is a Western, yeah. everything. I mean, they, they throw everything into every movie. Um, I would say that if, if people are looking for a movie, we we're, we'll definitely at some point cover one or all of the Kali films if we're on here long enough. But the one that people should check out is the one that has The Undertaker and Crush in it. <laughs> yeah. So Google that. I don't know the title offhand. It's like Kuhudi Babudi Babudi, yeah. um, which is probably very offensive. I mm-hmm. shouldn't. But uh, I don't know the language, mm-hmm. so that's what it that's what it looked like. It mm-hmm. had a lot of K's, <laughs> yeah. a lot of D's, and everything ended in an I. And wasn't there one with the fake Undertaker as well? That's the one. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the fake Undertaker Brian and Lee. Crush. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to spoil the reveal <laughs> oh, on that, but yes, <laughs> it's uh, Brian Lee as, as the fake Undertaker. <laughs> but he's playing the fake Undertaker, yeah. so you got to watch it. Um, and and that is that is uh, Bollywood in a nutshell. We get another wrestler here. We get Bill Goldberg. And yes. I've got Bill Goldberg's bio right here. He's born 1966. So he, unlike Kali's born in the 70s, Nash was born a little earlier yeah. than the other two. And then, you know, uh, uh, Goldberg and Austin, two relatively, years apart. Yeah, yeah. relatively the same age. Um, he is, uh, he's, he was a WCW champion from 97 to 2001. Obviously, won it after going on that streak of 173 and 0. Uh, went to WWE from 2003 to 2004. Um, let me, let me see here. Two time world champion. One time WCW heavyweight champion. One time world heavyweight champion. And is recognized by the WWE as the first undefeated world champion in the history of professional wrestling. <laughs> Two-time WCW U.S. heavyweight champion and one-time WCW tag team champion with Bret Hart. Now, this is what I want to say about this. All of that there, 
I don't even think of him as being that good of a wrestler. And not like his performance was yeah. bad. I don't even think of him as being that significant no. to the history of wrestling. And remember a couple of years ago when they did WrestleMania in Atlanta, they talked about him going in the Hall of Fame, and Triple H said, you know, oh, he's not, he'll never be in the Hall yeah. of Fame. You know, him and, and, uh, and uh, Shawn Michaels were like, yeah, you need to be a lot better than that. Mm-hmm. Now, these numbers, this, you know, I mean, look. Hall of Fame on. career. Hall of Fame career. But I guess the fact that he's Bill Goldberg, for God's sakes, I mean, just a guy who seemed like he never enjoyed a moment of what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he seemed definitely like a, a take the money and run type of guy. Yeah. Um, Former football player, after he left wrestling, was a commentator for some mixed martial arts federation. Uh, he does some TV show now on the DIY network called Garage Mahal, which I haven't seen. <laughs> And, and he was in Ready to Rumble. So yes. we have already seen him as well as Santa Slay. Yeah, which is which amazing. He was fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, a guy who's, uh, whose wrestling career didn't appeal to me, I will say, if I was 10 <laughs> when he was coming up, I might have thought he was the greatest thing ever. Uh, but my brother did, who was 10 when he came out. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Okay. My younger brother yeah. was a huge See, I think Goldberg that's it. Fan. I think that's the thing. I think if you're the right age... And you have the right type because he was he was you know a lot like Stone Cold you know uh, but I just felt he never had the charisma yeah. I just I felt that the only thing he had going for him was a winning streak in a sport that's yes yeah. and also a winning streak that wasn't a legitimate winning streak and this was my biggest problem yeah. with Goldberg from day one there was a, a, a pay per view where Roddy Piper was putting together a team right I don't remember who he was fighting but he held open auditions I, so they had. Jobbers come out from the back, right. and Piper, who at that point was not in good shape at all. This and was Piper was before his... beating these guys from the soundly, power plant. yes. And Bill Goldberg, under the name Bill Goldberg, comes out I've heard and this, jobbed yes. out to Piper. Yes. So when he debuted a couple months later with that monster undefeated gimmick... Right, he had already jobbed to Piper. <laughs> I've heard this. i I got to see if we can find the footage yeah. on this, because I, I definitely have heard this... Um, and and it doesn't it, it totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, look at when guys make a debut. Look, uh, we start we saw the undefeated streak, if you will, of Ryback. Mm-hmm. Ryback had already been around, going yip yip yip, what it do, <laughs> yeah. and then being on Tough Enough. You know, with with uh, I think he was in with Morrison when they were they were on Tough Enough. I mean, it is it is interesting how that happens. Um, but then we get so they're putting together the team. You know, to focus on the story of the movie, <laughs> they're putting together this team and. Really, nothing has happened for for about a half hour of the movie. They're just but, trying to get Kali. Yeah. He's the missing piece of the puzzle. They need. Uh, they also need speed, though. Yes. And they get Nelly. They go mm-hmm. play some basketball, and Adam Sandler takes a beating. And Nelly says, "Hey, you know what? If you're willing to take a beating, I'm willing to go. You know, play on your team." Uh, and then we get the craziest scene: the great Kali at a ping pong table, playing ping pong. Against himself, right. so they have the ping pong table. Instead of being open all the way, yeah. it's half open, so it's up like a drawbridge almost. Yeah, and he's just happily hitting the ball back and forth, it's almost like, like he doesn't ball. realize yes. that you can play it with two people. Right, and so Sandler puts it down, and Kali looks mad, <laughs> you know. And so then they play. They have to have computer animated that ball, or that ball was on a string. There's no yeah. way that the great Kali can play ping pong like this. He can't move that fast. Yeah, I see his hand. And slowly moving from left to right. I don't know how Sandler could aim that ball perfectly <laughs> yeah. at it. Every time since Forrest Gump, where I've seen a yes. ping pong scene in a movie, I just assume it's CG because yeah. in, in Forrest Gump it was, and that was 20 years now, ago. Now, let's remember Forrest Gump, he was rap, 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 rap. <laughs> this was to ting, to ting, to ting, to ting. I still don't believe it. I don't buy it. Yeah. I, Adam Sandler maybe could practice and learn some ping pong. Until I learn otherwise, I do not believe that Kali could hit the ping pong ball back once. <laughs> no, agreed. Uh, Kali's subtitled in the scene. Yes, I Adam, love that. Yeah, Adam Sandler asks him if he'll play. He says, uh, this particular prison guard will be playing, and that prison guard smiles. Kali then says, I'll play, which is subtitled, and that uh, guards uh, his frown, uh, or his, his smile turns into a frown. Yes. I was going to say his frown turns upside down, but his frown that turned upside down turns, turns upside down. Yeah. Yes. It does a 360. <laughs> no, it does a 180. A 180. 360, it'd be back upside down. Yeah, it yeah, does like right. a Justin Gabriel. That's right, that's right. So um, we see Austin and the guards in the back, and Austin's 
playing air guitar. He's doing, uh, he's like 3MB all of a sudden. Yeah. And he says, uh, that's how a white man plays guitar. Yeah, we get a really uncomfortable sequence here yes. where the guards, uh, Nelly's on library duty. He's yes. putting books away. And word has gotten back to the warden that they're assembling a pretty good team, so they're looking for a way to dismantle it now. So it's determined that they'll go Nelly into punching one of them so he can get kicked off the team. And so who are the guards we see in this scene? We've got uh, the uh, aforementioned Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. We have Kevin Nash. Yes, getting and, some good face time yes. here because up until this point, we hadn't really seen his face close up. We see it close up mm -hmm. here. It's recognizable as Nash, mm -hmm. but he's just got a little mustache. <laughs> yeah. And I think at this time, in 2005, people weren't used to him being that gray yeah. and not having the you know the beard. But mm -hmm. it, it definitely looks... And the short hair, too. Yeah, and then we've also got another Stone Cold... That's right. Brian Bosworth. That's right. Brian Bosworth, star of the film Stone Cold. That has nothing to do with wrestling. So, Brian Bosworth, famous football player, very flashy, very flamboyant. Nash and Austin. And Austin must say the N-word in this scene 20 times. Yes. I mean, Austin is race baiting, and he's good in this scene. He's believable. You you want to hit him. Yeah. You know, he's intimidating. He's scary. I, I, I really, I liked his performance in this. I kind of feel that I don't mind the, I don't mind people saying the N-word if you're watching a drama, if you're watching a movie. I feel like when you're going for laughs mm -hmm. and then you make everybody really uncomfortable by having yeah. Having a hero of the 1990s yeah. sitting there and race baiting Nelly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, I agree. And also. It's a little uncomfortable. Not terribly yeah. uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. not like I'm, you know, uh, saying, I'm never and throwing my well, white gloves mm -hmm. down and storming out of the mm -hmm. room. But that's also a, a way in the movies to sort of instantly make the audience hate that person. Yeah. And I felt like. We already didn't like the guards. <laughs> we didn't need further reason to want to see real harm come to them. It definitely yeah. felt very out of place for this movie. Well, we don't know yet if there is a payoff to this, so there may be some kind of payoff. At least there's probably a comedic payoff mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, but but so that's and, and and that's about where we are. We get done in the library scene. And that's where we left off. Yeah, I think the last thing we saw was Kali almost taken off a guy's head with, oh uh, my with God. a kick. <laughs> that, that couldn't be Kali as well. That's a CGI Kali leg, or they found a ridiculous stand-in who they should have cast in the film at that point, because there's no other guy that big. Do you think they reverse shot it where they hit Kali, hold your leg up, bring it down, we'll shoot it backwards? <laughs> no, there was a guy, maybe this is what they did. They had two guys in those green screen costumes, one holding the leg up <laughs> yes. and one supporting his back to make sure he didn't fall down because Kali, I, I know this was 2005, but Kali, even then, I don't think could lift his leg up that high. Oh, Kali is great, yes. you know, physically in this part, though. God, he looks the part. And I, I do like the football scenes, but really, so far, this film has just been a series of montages and gags. Yes. So that's it. Let's return to the action right here on Camel Clutch Cinema's Super Bowl special with the longest yard. And we're back, and at the end of the third quarter, the score is 14 to 15. A very close game out there, Craig Cohen. It's going to go down to the wire, and I'll tell you, man, it has been a, a real rowdy, just rip-roaring game. So right now, we are at the point the game is just about to start. The foot is about to kick that ball off, and we hit pause, and we resume here. So let's back up to where we left off. We've been seeing a lot of Nick Totoro. Yes, and Nick Totoro is sort of introduced as a character who's got a, a couple of screws loose. Yeah, yeah, and he's good. I mean, this he is an is. actor you've seen in a lot of movies, and it's an interesting choice for this part, but he's really good in it. <laughs> yeah, like uh, he um, asks, why can't I play quarterback? And Sandler tosses him the ball, he throws it, and it falls almost immediately. He says, that's why. Yeah. Then he says, I want to be kicker. Why Why is this guy kicker? And the same thing. So yeah. he's sort of got that running gag. And then there's some gay humor related to him, sure. you know, uh, being interested in some of the uh, inmates who are acting as cheerleaders. Right, right. We also, uh, you pointed out Michael Irvin. Yes, uh, I, who, retired football player, playing for the convicts. Not really a lot of, um, 
you know, talk time, but he's there and he's got a mustache and it looks great. And this is Michael Irvin, I R B I N. Yes. Because I think, and I may be wrong about this, Magic Johnson's name <laughs> is Michael Irving Johnson. Yes. So. I actually did a really quick search for Michael Irving right. before we had determined it was Irvin. And on IMDb alone, there were eight names that came <laughs> up, eight separate names. <laughs> All right, so we get uh, a lot of McDonald's jokes throughout this movie. Terry Crews has a thing that he can smuggle in McDonald's, so at any point he can hand you a quarter pounder. Yes. And I I don't know if they paid for this, because the way it's used is often very ridiculous, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, he'll pull one out of his trunks or or something, you know, and and hand it over. Uh, But, yeah, he uh, he does a rap at one point earlier in the film, which was very funny. I wish I remembered the, the line, but it was something like, like, you know, I, I, I got the cheese that you, you makes you please, you know, I got yeah. the shake that makes you quake. And he's like, I got the burgers. And he can't And he can't give them the rhyme, so he's just like, I just got burgers. <laughs> and he's great. Terry Crews, who we've seen in Expendables, mm-hmm. is a guy that can play action mm-hmm. and play comedy very well. Of course, everybody hates Chris. He's, yes. you know, the dad on that. Very funny guy, incredibly big and imposing. Uh, speaking of big and imposing, we get at one point Colleen Goldberg doing the robot dance. Yes. <laughs> so team's coming together. Yes. There's one chink in the armor, and this is a guy you pointed out, very famous scene in the movie Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. This guy was in it. I didn't recognize him until you pointed him out, because we're talking years later. Yeah. He looks much older and looks much different, but sounds the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Patrick Kelly who played Sully in Commando, who famously was the guy that said, you said you were going to kill me last. Arnold says, I lied. Right. Drops him off the cliff. Here he plays a guy who's working both sides. He's a convict, but he's running back to the warden and funneling information about the team. Yeah. He uh, made his first appearance in The Warriors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. That, and so that's a great movie. Yeah, so he's had a pretty long career. I, I remember watching Commando as a kid. And that was, to me, the funniest thing in the world, you know, was when he's like, remember when I said I would kill you last? He's like, yeah, you did. You said you killed me last. And he's like, I lied. And he kills him. And as a kid, it's like, oh, my God, that was a one-liner. He is going straight to hell thinking about that one-liner. He's going, woo, I've been burned. Yeah, next time you put that movie in, it's clear as day. And this is from an era of movie making that I loved in Commando is a very, very low-budget movie if you watch it now, which is surprising because you think all those Stallone and Schwarzenegger yeah, movies sure. were high-budgeted. But when he's holding him off that cliff there, you see the wire running up his oh, leg. Sure, you, know, they, yeah. you know, As strong as Arnold is, they weren't depending on him to hold him up. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie... There's yeah, that's right. He drops him off the cliff. Yeah. He doesn't shoot him. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. You know what the shooting is? Indiana Jones with the guy with swinging the, the knife. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, so he drops him yeah. right off the cliff. Yeah. Yes. And then also at the end of that movie, there's an explosion, and there's like four soldiers lined up, and clear as day, it's just four dummies that are propped up. Oh, I mean, great. It's really, you know, it's it's really funny to see. I mean, and this was at the height of Arnold's sort of box office, you know, yep. drawing power. Yeah. In either the uh, the Mad Magazine or Crack Magazine parody of Commando, which was called Commando, I think it was Mad Magazine, he's like, I remember when I told you I would kill you last? And he's like, yes, you said that. And he's like, I meant the last panel on this page. <laughs> and then he drops them. <laughs> so we get that. We get this golf scene where James Cromwell is out golfing with his buddies, and Nash shows up and yeah. brings... He brings Adam Sandler with him to meet them, and the, Cromwell's kind of giving him a brow beating. But everybody else there is like, "Hey, you slept with my wife mm-hmm. once, Adam Sandler. Before we were married, you're yeah. the best. I really <laughs> dig you. If, if my wife would sleep with you, she must be pretty hot." And then they pose for a picture, and this is Nash's best moment so mm-hmm. far. Nash comes right over and stands right next to them, and the warden's like, Nash, get out of the shot. Get out of the shot. <laughs> At this point, too, Nash's steroids, he takes steroids out of a, a, a bottle, Mark's yes, steroids, Mark steroids, and they're replaced with 
estrogen by the team. Yes, because what happens is they the, the guards wet down the field, so they have to play on a wet field to create as clear what a revival. So to get even, they break in and get the medical records, and one of the things they do is, is put those estrogen pills in there. Next time we see Nash, and this is why I said the scene in the photo was his best scene so far, He's rubbing his nipples, and he's like, I've had hot flashes all day, and now my nipples are real sore. That is one of the funniest Nash moments I think I've ever seen that doesn't involve him tearing his quad. (laughs) Or coming out dressed like the great and powerful Oz. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) So so the teams really, they're they're fitting together. Uh, We're getting a real close bond. All of a sudden, a real tight bond. Oh, wait a minute. There's a huge explosion in Adam Sandler's jail cell, and Chris Rock dies. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Right before that, we get, you know, like the night before, they're like, hey, you know, we had a great time. Here's my my family, and I can't wait to get out of prison, and we're going to have a drink outside. So you know something's coming if if you've watched movies before. But the way they set this up is so weird. There's even like this weird moment where he's like, you must get a lot of women. He's like, well, I'm not very popular outside. He's like, OJ gets women and he cuts people's heads off. And Adam Sandler does the weirdest unnecessary spit take. So Chris Rock dies. Yeah. We have a funeral all of a sudden in this movie. This movie goes up and down. They don't know what movie they're making here. We've got comedy and then we've got the N-word. Then we've got comedy and then we've got explosions and people dying. And, and a, a relatively graphic explosion yeah. too. And not in that fun Bollywood way we were talking about. This is just a real tone, you know, tonally uneven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really. So the team's going to watch a movie. They're going to watch Short Circuit. Instead they get to see, well, they, they get to get to see the uh, the other team, the the uh, team of guards practice so they can learn their, their moves. But they also get to see Cloris Lee and Adam Sandler's love scene, which, God, I always wanted to see that. And we get to see uh, Nicholas Totoro, uh, his scene where With he's... Tracy Morgan. Yes, yeah. Tracy Morgan as one of the cheerleaders. And so after the funeral, after the explosion, it's game time. We're getting right up to the game. We see the cheerleaders, Tracy Morgan and a bunch of other men dressed as women. Um, you squint your eyes, it's... it's, it's Pretty effective, uh, which is not good. So don't squint your eyes. And we learned the name of the team because Chris Rock got them uniforms before he exploded. Yeah, one final gift. He, well, he got uh, Bill Goldberg, a big giant jock strap. Yes. There's a running joke through the movie about how well endowed Goldberg is. Right. Which must have been in Goldberg's contract. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got... No, you know what? I bet you're right. I bet you there was, you know, uh, his when he got the script, there was a gag. He's like, why is there a gag where I have a small wiener? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, Adam's like, it was really funny if you have a small wiener. He's like, how about I have a big wiener? And he's like, sure, you know, fine. He's like, I'll take half a pay cut if I can have a big wiener. <laughs> So, so what is the name of the team? The Mean Machine. Uh, Chris Rock's character has gotten jerseys for the entire team, and they come out on the field looking like a pro football team. So, and, and in addition, Burt Reynolds has he's a jersey on. So he's suited up, and we are ready for action. We're returning to the field here for the Super Bowl on Camel Clutch Cinema with the longest yard. And that is the ball game with a final score of 14 to 21. What an amazing upset, Craig Cohen. I know. I think I lost a whole bunch of money tonight. All right. So we got to the big game. The refs are biased. Nash is a woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's some hard playing football, some absurd, you know, tricks that there's no way could happen at any point in any real live game. There's an amazing crowd that's turned out for this, and it's on ESPN yes. with Chris Berman side by side with one of the convicts. Yes. It, it's so ridiculous. You've got Austin telling Nash to be more manly because yeah. Nash is like, oh, it really hurts me when you talk to me that way. And then he pulls an Al Roker. Yes. <laughs> See, the racism bit is paid off because the big guy, the Michael Clark Duncan guy, is told all the things that Austin said and then in the library, and then Austin gets tackled so far, so hard. It's clotheslined almost. Yes, that he, he rokers himself. Yeah. And it's 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 the end for Mr. Austin. Yeah. He's carried out on a stretcher. I almost wondered if Nelly whispered in his ear what he really said or things that would make that guy mad because he's gonna rip up your coloring <laughs> books exactly. and beat up the Easter bunny, yeah. yeah. 
I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's pretty funny. Um, so they're tied up at the half, and then James Cromwell comes in for his big heel turn, and he says, I'm going to frame you for murdering Chris Rock. Yes. And Sandler's like, oh, no. And he's like, you're going to have to throw the game. So Sandler... Fakes an injury. Right. But there's a double cross because Cromwell tells Sandler he's going to... Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, and then they're going to take it easy on him. And so then he says to his guy, he's like, three touchdowns, and then then you go hard on him. Yes. Which... So so Adam Sandler takes himself out of the game with an injury. Right. But then he gets fed up when he sees that Cromwell has gone back on his word and says, you know what? I don't mind doing 25 extra years on my sentence. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be here till the end of time. So they can't tackle the great Kali. Kali's running with guys on his back. Nash is hanging out with the cheerleaders cuz he's now basically a woman. Yes. Rob Schneider shows up to go you can do it for no good reason. Yeah. Burt Reynolds comes back in the game and plays. We get a, a big finale where Adam Sandler does some crazy move where he 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 you know barely makes it by yeah. reaching his arm into the end zone. I'm not sure if it's legal, yeah. but it doesn't matter. It's how the game ends. He wins, then goes to get the game ball, and we get another heel turn from James Cromwell because this ridiculously uneven movie has no idea what it should be doing. Yeah, Cromwell says he's trying to escape. He gives uh, one of the guards a, 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 sh- a rifle and says, shoot him. He's escaping. The guard can't do it. And then we see that Adam Sandler was just simply picking up the game ball to give to Cromwell all for his serious. trophy case. It gets yes. all serious. There's dramatic no music. And yeah. another thing about the game is when they went to the half, we weren't sure if it was halftime yes. or if it was the end of the game. They didn't show the scoreboard very yeah. often. It didn't seem like they had any handle on how to do s- a football game right. in a movie. I didn't think they did a good job of that because normally you have to have a lot of going back because when you're watching a real football game on TV, mm-hmm. you got the score on mm-hmm. the screen. We're trained as, as viewers yeah. to not really focus on what the score is on our head now because it's on the screen yeah. all the time. And so when they do a scene like this, there's got to be a lot of the coach going, all right, we're down by four. Yeah. All right, we're up by two. There's five minutes left on the clock till the second half. You know, yeah. they got to keep saying stuff like that. They don't. So the convicts win. They win by, I think, one point. One point, because they go for the two-point conversion at the end. They t- they have the potential to tie it up with the, yeah, with the, the field goal. The comics don't do that. No, but they go all the way, and they run a... Uh, just a silly trick play, and that's that's how this thing ends. And so that, and, and the one guard says, "I'm not. I yeah. I won't testify and say that you killed Chris Chris right. Rock. I won't lie." He's like, "I know you didn't. You kill beat Chris us Rock. fair and square." <laughs> so this movie came out in uh, in 2005, 2005, a month after WrestleMania 21. So to put some context on where things were with wrestling, you know, the guys that were in this movie are not on the card for WrestleMania. I I assume that Kali was wrestling, but just was not of the caliber to appear on this card. I think maybe he was either on some kind of injury timeout at this point, which Kali has been on a bunch of, or he just happened not to be on this card. May have been on the you know the the uh, backlash card the next month or something. On the the WrestleMania card, this was the one out in Los Angeles. You had The Undertaker beating Randy Orton. A lot of people thought Randy Orton was going to beat The Undertaker. They had done all kinds of tricks. They brought back Cowboy Bob Orton. They had an Undertaker in a coffin. Undertaker looking at Undertaker in the coffin, which I think was both times the same. It was both it was Mark Calloway yeah. in the coffin, some trick photography. But the Randy Orton was the legend killer at this time. So a lot of people, including Randy, when they found out this match was going to happen, thought that Randy was going to go over. But he doesn't. He loses 14 minutes into a, a pretty exciting match. Also on the card, we've got the goofy big show uh, against, I, I think his name was Akibno. Okay, the sumo match. Yeah. yeah. Akibono? Yeah, Akibono. Akibono. Yes. And, uh, Big Show in a diaper, so that match lasted, you know, a very short amount of time. I think like a minute, and and Big Show lost, you know, mm-hmm. which he which he's good at doing at WrestleMania. He also lost to Floyd Money Mayweather. <laughs> yes, too. he likes to lose yeah. against the big names. Although I don't know how many people Aki Bono was bringing <laughs> in. I couldn't even remember his name. Uh, John Cena defeated. John Bradshaw Layfield, the JBL, the former, you know, Justin Hawk Bradshaw, half of the APA, defeated him for the WWE Championship, and Batista defeated Triple H for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. So that was the the card there, WrestleMania. That's the, the time of the, that this match took place in. This this uh, mm-hmm. uh, the longest yard. This yeah. matchup is this the one where they went Hollywood. 
Yes, it okay. is. This those is had, those had great promos. They had fantastic, you know, they did Braveheart with Ric Flair, and they did The Undertaker as Dirty Harry. Mm-hmm. Really good stuff. Um, I want to go back, though, to 1999. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl Sunday, 1999, they had the Empty Arena Halftime Heat mm-hmm. Match. you remember this? I remember watching this. I remember convincing everybody in my house yes. that we needed to switch away from the halftime show and watch wrestling, yeah. which now, was a big, big... I don't even know how I how yeah. I convinced the house to do it, but I did. It must have been a bad halftime show. Yeah. I don't know, because I was watching WWE <laughs> with Halftime Heat. They timed it out perfectly. The way they had that, a countdown clock. Yeah, they had a countdown clock. And it was an empty arena match, I can only imagine, so that they had a bunch of, you know, they're like, this two minutes, this two mm-hmm. minutes, this two minutes, this two minutes. So at any point, they could skip to the end, yeah. you know, if, if, if whatever, you know, whatever amount of time they, they knew they had. So uh, it ended with a forklift coming down on the rock, and Mankind beats them by, you know, by putting a forklift mm-hmm. with a pallet on top of it on top of them. There was also a Super Bowl commercial that year for the WWF. I don't know if there's mm-hmm. ever been another one. Yeah. But that was the one where you saw Sable. At headquarters, saw, yeah. Yes, everybody's there. I uh, remember Undertaker and Kane mm-hmm. and Mankind says, I want a better place for all mankind. And then Vince is like, get it? Yeah, after a guy comes flying out of a window at Titan Towers. Yeah, WWF Attitude. On the Halftime Heat special, they played an alternate version of that commercial that was racier, that was shot for Halftime Heat. And so every gag that happens in the commercial, there was a stupider or more violent or more sexual Mm -hmm. gag. Like there was a Val Venus gag that's not in, you know, the the regular commercial. So that brings us to the all-important question. Mm -hmm. Do you tap out to the longest yard? Okay, I got to say that for the most part, I say I enjoy Adam Sandler films, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in certain Adam Sandler films that make you really lose faith in the guy. <laughs> the Longest Yard has all of those moments. <laughs> Tonally, it's a mess. It, As much as there's great small moments for the wrestlers, some of them aren't utilized well. Stone Cold, yeah, he's taken out because of the racism angle, but he wasn't utilized enough. Nash had some real funny stuff. But aside from that, you know, Goldberg, you don't you really... barely see him, you know. Yeah. I mean, as in, in terms of a movie that featured four wrestlers, we didn't really get a lot of it. I, I got to say I tapped to The Longest Yard. Let me say this about Adam Sandler movies. What I have noticed is that since Adam Sandler became a big star, so he did his first, you know, few movies that, that were hits, minor hits, like mm-hmm. Billy Madison, uh, uh, Happy Gilmore, yeah. and, and in these movies... Adam Sandler knew how to laugh at himself. Mm-hmm. Adam Sandler has forgotten how to do that. He is never the punchline of any joke in this movie. Mm-hmm. He is always, even when he's when he's laughed at, you're laughing at how clever he is mm-hmm. or how sexy he is. I yeah. mean, that's one of the through lines in this yeah. movie. Um, and, and it really is all over the place. I can't stress that mm-hmm. enough. There are points in this movie where if you walked in on it, you'd be like, wow, this is a very serious movie. And yeah. then other points, you'd be like, wow, this is the silliest movie. I yeah. should take my four-year-old to see this because it's for his age group. And then other parts where you're like, wow, this is kind of a dirty, racy movie with a lot of, a lot of language and a lot of, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of racial you know, stuff. I, I, would, I would only want to show this to some real edgy people. Some edgy mm-hmm. folks might come and see this. So... I tap, I tap hard to this movie. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I would recommend for people. This is the type of movie where you don't recommend it to people, but you say, go to YouTube and see if there's some clips yeah. of the wrestlers from this. See if you can find some stuff with Nash. Maybe you might want to find some of the stuff with Austin and enjoy that. But I, I, I can't recommend mm-hmm. this movie. I tap out to the longest yard. Yeah, and they've all, every wrestler featured in this movie. Have, have appeared in a better movie. So if you're going to watch a Kali movie, there's other better Kali movies. Oh, yeah. There's better Stone Cold movies. There's better Nash movies. And there's even better Adam Sandler movies where he acts like he gives a, a damn that he's there. I mean... <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not trying to stop you. You're, yeah, you're going to say it. But I see what you're saying. But there's even a better wrestling Adam Sandler movie because there's wrestling in Billy Madison. There's a mm-hmm. guy who who's a wrestler and he comes in at the end. You know, it's one of the teachers. I think yeah. he might even be the principal. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, a, another you know another important wrestling moment in a in a movie is in the Water Boy. You've got 
the big, big show, show yeah. Paul White mm-hmm. as Captain Insano wrestling for WCW, which is Bobby Boucher's favorite character. So, yeah, there's a better wrestling connection if you want that in Adam Sandler. So I tap out. Today. Yeah, it almost seems like they could have picked one direction to go in, run with that, and it would have been a, 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 probably a movie I could have sat down and really enjoyed. Yeah, I wonder. Just pick, I, it a, just pick a, a tone and go with it. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I mean, really, either one would have worked. Serious movie, mm-hmm. the silly movie, mm-hmm. the PG film, mm-hmm. yeah. or the R-rated yeah. movie. Whichever one they wanted to go for, they went for all four of them. Well, thanks for coming over. Thank I'm you. glad we got together to watch this. Yeah. This was a Super Bowl celebration, Greg. It really was. And I thank you for listening here on the Super Bowl Spectacular of Camel Clutch Cinema. Do we have to pay for the use of the name Super Bowl? Because they always uh, say the big, the big game. game. Yeah, so we should have said the big game. Sue me for what? We started a football team. You like football? It's kind of like ping pong. Only the ball's a little bigger and egg-shaped, like my head. Give you a good chance to throw people on the ground, hurt them like you used to when you were a kid. Ten feet, six inches ago. We'd be playing the guards. I play.